for Democratic strategist Richard Goodstein, Republican strategist Boris uh, Epstein. Good to see both of you. Thanks for being here. Good morning, Craig. Uh, it's not. It's not morning. It's afternoon. It's morning somewhere. <laughs> uh, Richard, let me start with you, since you at least know the time of day. House Minority Speaker Nancy Pelosi. She was on MSNBC just a short time ago. She was asked about specifically the partisan nature of the big of the uh, Benghazi conversation. Take a listen. The obsession that some of my Republican colleagues have in the House uh, is. Uh, doesn't look like it's on the path to really finding a solution, but just to keeping an issue alive. Are, Rep are Republicans obsessed? It, 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 is that a straight question? I mean, look, hey, yeah. the, fact of, the fact of the matter is, um, if the, all you do is watch Fox News and read Drudge and go to certain donors and have colleagues that have a certain point of view and your staff the same kind of view, you are convinced to a certainty that this really is the crime of the century. Incidentally, remember, this isn't the only analogy to Watergate. That was Solyndra. That was Fast and Furious. So we're kind of seeing a pattern here. But the fact of the matter is, I think what's the problem here for the Republican Party, they're not taking um, kind of uh, lessons from me, is after the 2012 elections, where incidentally they tried to hammer this issue to no effect then, I thought the lesson was they got beat kind of bad, that we need to regroup and have a new message. And this is just doubling down on something that didn't work before. Absolutely. Because at the end of the day, we know what the facts are. That, that independent panel came out with them. The department said they were going to adopt all the recommendations. We didn't learn a darn thing that was new at that hearing the other day. Boris, it's, it's difficult, it's, it, it's difficult to, to, to disagree with that point. I mean, in terms of, it's pretty easy for me to disagree. Well, but, but what, what did we learn? Uh, what, what new information, new substantive piece of information, new nugget uh, fr from the hearing on Wednesday? Well, the fact that there was a really concerted effort by the White House uh, to cover up or to change some of the wording in the talking points is something we learned. But that's not the most important thing. First of all, mentioning Solyndra and Fast and Furious, there was wrongdoing found in both of those. So if we're following up on, the, on that precedent, this is not a good, that's not good news for Democrats and certainly not for Hillary Clinton. Listen, when she testified herself, she was overly emotional and she tried to stonewall the committee. She being Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton. She tried to stonewall the committee in being overly emotional and screaming and yelling, as you see there on TV now, but not giving any answers. So what the Congress wants to see, what Republicans want to see, and Democrats should want to as well, is what actually happened, what did, what did the Secretary of State do, why was there not help sooner, you know, but should we be politicizing it, should Rand Paul be going after Hillary Clinton? Should we be raising money off of it? Probably not. I would say no. I, Richard, I, I want to play another snippet here from, from Rand Paul last night in Iowa talking about Hillary Clinton. Take a listen. And she was asked directly by myself and others, did you read the cables? Did you read the request for help? And she said no. She says, I'm busy. I get lots of cables. And I say, look, I don't expect you to read every cable from Bulgaria or Estonia, but I do expect you from one of the five most dangerous countries in the world, Libya, to be reading the, reading the cables. Now, Hillary Clinton's name was mentioned more than 30 times at that hearing on Wednesday. Rand Paul goes after her uh, last night in Iowa, and we know how important the Hawkeye State is when it comes to picking presidents. Why does it seem as if uh, Republicans are going after Hillary far more than they're going after the White House on this? Well, look at your watch. So last year in 2012, Ob same facts, Obama was the target. Now, of course, Obama's not going to be running again, so Hillary Clinton might. It's 2013, and we can expect, frankly, until a lot of these people take their last breath, they will be convinced to a certainty that something catastrophic here. The good news for Secretary Clinton is that we had an independent panel, Ambassador Pickering, a lifelong Republican, Admiral Mullen, look at all the facts, did an exhaustive study, made a lot of recommendations, which the Secretary of State said they would implement every single one of them. So I, my message to uh, Senator Paul and everybody else is keep it going. Because the fact of the matter is, the people you're speaking to are live in a certain uh, bubble. Everybody else doesn't see it the way you do, and I think everybody else sees the issues but, kind of but in yet, a different light. But yet, here we are on MSNBC right now talking about it and presenting both sides of that issue. So Richard is wrong once again. This is now playing out all over the major networks, and it's getting a lot of airtime. And it's not just Republicans who only watch Fox News. It's, it's folks along this political spectrum out there who are learning more and more about what happened in Benghazi, and who is there blamed to be put on Secretary of State. Clinton. Now, is there a political game to this? Of course it is. We, for over 200 years now, have been living in... But I think the question is...
is, has the political game, or, the, or, or at least the politicizing of it, has, has that now overshadowed uh, what perhaps at some point was a, a, a legitimate discussion over the merits about the facts? It shouldn't do so. The bottom line is that an ambassador died for Americans, and the ambassador working directly for the Secretary of State, right? So the, the, the questions need to be asked, is over-politicization good for any side of the political spectrum? It is not. Richard, at, at what point does this begin to backfire? At what point does Hillary Clinton start to look uh, look like like someone who's who's being unjustifiably attacked? Um, look, you know, I think she and people around her and Democrats generally have very much gone out of their way not to point out the dozen attacks on U.S. embassies and compounds under the Bush administration where dozens of people died. Because the fact of the matter is that you just did. That politici- no, no, no. But I'm saying they, they've not done that because that is to politicize it. And I really think. But you, you just know, did I, something. I truly, you can't say I, you're not doing it if you're doing it. You just did. Look, I truly think that Hillary Clinton is on the fence about whether to run or not. I believe that if I'm Hillary Clinton and I look at this, it's like, really? Is this your best punch? You have to throw at me? Um, come on. I, I almost think this would encourage her to get in, not to clear her name, but because the feeling is, really, is this all you got? She felt Didn't pretty strong in about doing those hearings, though. You right. see how emotional she got. So her Clinton not take this very seriously. You should, too. Democratic strategist Richard Goodstein, Republican strategist Boris, uh, Boris Epstein. Good to see both of you. Thank you Good so much. See. Thank you, Craig. Sage advice for the class of 2013 at Howard University in Washington, D.C. Former President Bill Clinton offering keys to their success. Virtually all of you 